uh, vocal, aggressive guy, the sort of guy you want to be on offensive lineman. The NFC East was a very interesting division last year. You had the most surprising team, your eventual Super Bowl champion, New York Giants, and then you had one of the more disappointing overrated teams in the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, when it came to the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys, in the words of Dennis Green, they were who we thought they would be, mediocre to below average. But all these teams wanted to get better. They tried that in day two of the draft. Let's first look at the Philadelphia Eagles. They start off with Michael Kendricks. He's someone that's pro-ready, uh, playing in college. He had a lot of talent, a lot of skill. He's someone that you don't look at and say, well, he'll need a year or two to develop. No, he'll come right in and he'll make an immediate impact. Now, they've brought in linebackers already in the offseason, like D'Amico Ryan's in the trade, but you can never have enough linebackers. This next guy, Vinny Curry, well, he's getting comparisons to Cliff Averill. That's a good comparison, one you want to have. Just like Cliff Averill, he has a knack at getting after the ball. Not just bringing a quarterback down with the sack, but getting the strip as well. So they land two guys on the defensive side of the ball that can give them an immediate impact and hopefully can make what was once a disappointing season come to this one and they can realize some of the potential that they've already shown. Moving up next, we have the New York Giants. Now, these guys are skilled, they're talented. Uh, their drafts have been successful. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. They lose a player, they replace them in the draft. That player that they draft turns out to be good. Will this be the case with Ruben Randall? We'll have to wait and see, but I like what they've been doing in drafting, so I have to put confidence in them. Ruben Randall played in a pro-style offense at LSU, so he's someone that is used to the big lights, used to the big games, so he'll be going over to New York to try to provide what he did over there in LSU. Now, the next player, uh, this guy, cornerback Jerron Housley. Now, he was described as being a good squat corner, I don't know what that means. I guess that's good. I know that they draft good, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can bring to the table. Uh, once again, they lose a cornerback, they bring one in. It's a system, and I think other teams need to start following what this team is doing here in New York. Now, moving on to our next team, we have the Washington Redskins with Josh Liberius. No, or is that Liribius? I think it's Josh Liribius. He's not a known character. He's not someone that is a household name, but Mike Shanahan likes what he can bring to the table. He's a big guard. He's a role grader, a mauler, and despite the fact that they've drafted RG3 and they want to pass the ball some, they still want to run the ball as well. We know Mike Shanahan is efficient at that, specifically with the zone blocking, and they think that this guy, Josh Laribius, can do just that. They only had one pick because they sacrificed this year's draft and many others in the future to get RG3, but if you get the guy that you want, you should be satisfied. Similar situation with the Dallas Cowboys because of trades. You look here, they don't have a lot of picks. They bring in Tyrone Crawford. He's a defensive end slash D tackle. He can do a lot of things and you don't need him to get after the quarterback so much, but you need him to cause pressure. And in that way, guys like DeMarcus Ware won't have as much friction and they can get to the quarterback. But enough with me, I know you're sick of me. Let's go over here to the table. Let's see what everyone else thinks about the A or the NFC East. Kyle, why don't you start us off with the Eagles? Dream team. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, I know you're gonna hate me for this one. No, I, uh, the, the Eagles realized they drafted the wrong Matthews brother, so they still have to shore up the inside of their linebacking core. They go with Michael Kendricks, the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, then they trade down with my Packers to 27, still get Vinnie Curry, first round talent. Uh, going to be great on that D-line. And then uh, they go ahead with Nick Foles, as you mentioned. Uh, he's going to compete with Trent Edwards and Mike Kafka to back up great. Michael Vick. B+. Plus. Next. Like you were saying, Jerry, the Giants just seem to, you know, they lose a guy, they add know a guy. They lose a guy, they add a guy. They, uh, they lost Mario Manningham, they added uh, Ruben Randall. They lost Aaron Ross, they added Hosley. I, I got to give them an A uh, until they prove me otherwise. Redskins uh, obviously didn't have a second rounder because they traded for uh, RG3. In the third round, they get uh, Laribius, I believe, as his name. <laughs> uh, this is the hardest one of them. But uh, not exactly the most athletic guy, but uh, seems to be smart, ready to be a zone blocker, uh, vocal, aggressive guy, the sort of guy you want to be on offensive lineman. I say B+. Plus. I'm going to give a B- minus to the Dallas Cowboys. They get the guy they wanted, Tyrone Crawford. They don't have a lot of picks to choose from. But overall, 
Uh, they don't have a lot of picks because they landed Morris Claiborne. So this pick kind of ties in with that one. So I'm going to give him a B minus. We'll see what uh, Tyrone Crawford can do. I think he'll be OK, though. All right, Jimmy. Hey, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe to SB Nation. More draft coverage on the way. Laribius, Liberius. Liberius, Liberius. Liberius Thomas. Hate <laughs> <Ate> a potato. <laughs>